Hello and welcome to another video. As usual, my name is Jeffrey and this is the Inquisitive University. You're very welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about ISPs. And when I say ISPs, I'm talking about image signal processors, not uh, internet service provider, because they, are both, they both have the same acronym, really. Uh, so if you're hearing ISP, you may want to check with the speaker, uh, sir, ma'am, are you talking about internet service providers or are you talking about image signal processors? Because what we want to talk about right now is image signal processor. Now, what is an image signal processor and why should you even be interested? Why should you know about about it well it is important that you know especially if you take pictures I mean everyone does take pictures to an extent we live in the social media age now where snap 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 post snap 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 post not everybody snaps and posts though because personally myself I don't take a lot of pictures of myself so I don't really take and snap and post but that's just me lots of people do take snap 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 post they snap the food they take pictures of their uh, places of work cars flowers leaves plants you know some people are more vain and take pictures of themselves themselves me 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 so everyone does take pictures and most people, when they want to buy a smartphone, one of the very big requirements, in fact, it's a deal breaker for them when it comes to smartphones, is I need a phone that can take good pictures, pictures that look great, pictures that look nice. You follow? That's what they're all about. I need a phone that takes good, decent pictures. Some people know, won't even go about saying decent. They'll tell you, I want the best phone, the very best phone, the absolute best. So when it comes to that, you see, um, I've seen people come out and then most of the time, more often than not, they'll say, well, you want a phone with, that can take good pictures and video, you are, you're going to want to be looking at the cameras. And then they go on to megapixels. I already have a video tagged the problem with megapixels. You see it on the top of your screen, as long as I'm the one editing this one. So they'll tell you, if you get a phone with big megapixels, ah, it's okay, it's all good, you're good to go. That is not always true. I've, I, I've done, like I said, I've done, a, I've done a video called the problem with megapixel megapixel count and why you should not be basing your smartphone choices if you like cameras a lot or if you want to take pictures and videos a lot based on megapixel count. Because I mean, up until recently, when um, Google Pixel and the iPhone were both using, they are not using 48 megapixel cameras now uh, and above, but once upon a time, it was strictly, strictly 12 megapixel cameras and they still outperformed mid-range <laughs> mid-range smartphones with 48 and 64 and even possibly 108 megapixel cameras so it is not about the megapixel count absolutely not scratch that from your mind photography on smartphones follows this pattern you take a picture when you want to take a picture you whip out your phone right you whip out your smartphone and then you aim it at a subject light from the subject that you want to take is going to reflect into the camera the camera will then capture that light when the camera captures that light it's going to then save it in form of electrical energy when it says it in form of electrical energy, there, there are circuits on the back of your camera that converts that electrical energy into digits, binary, 10101010. So that, that, those digits now become data. That data is going to be sent to your SOC. It is the SOC that will then process that data into a usable image that appears on your screen. Now, the part of the SOC that processes that is you know, mostly in charge of processing whatever comes out of the smartphone camera that goes into the phone. The main part of the SOC that processes it is called the ISP or the image signal processor. It doesn't really work alone. Sometimes it works with the GPU, it works with the AI unit and so on and so forth. But when it comes to processing, the major function of the ISP is that, processing whatever it is that comes out of your camera. Now, two people may have the same 48, 48 megapixel camera, but the quality of the ISP that is in the backstage, you know, that's there, that is processing these images before they pop up on your screen, is going to play a huge part in how pictures come out. I don't know if you're following. So it's very important to know this, that smartphone photography requires uh, the sensor at the back. It's important, yes, but it also requires processing inside the phone. The images have to be processed. That's why sometimes you could go out and take pictures, right? And you take pictures and the leaves are a little greener than you look at the leaves outside, you look at your phone, you look at the leaves, you look at your phone and you're like, okay, this phone is good. Some of us can't really explain it, right? But there is processing that goes on inside your smartphone that makes sure that you know, when, you take a, when you take a picture of, of a leaf, for example, and you put it on your smartphone, the ISP is going to take that image and it's going to like, okay, let's brush this image out so it looks nice. And then there's an AI block next to the ISP that says, you know, I've got 10,000 pictures of what leaves are supposed to look like. So this isn't looking leafy enough. Let's touch here, let's touch here, let's touch here, let's touch here. Bam, looking nice. All right, send it to the screen so that our boss can see what he or she has taken. And then it's gone. So it's very important to, to know the ISP, rather, or the function of the ISP on your smartphone. Now, ISPs are not all made the same. 
ISPs are different. Different companies produce different ISPs, and these different ISPs have different qualities you know, in terms of tiers, in terms of function. Now, for example, the ISP on a, or rather on an entry level phone with an entry level SOC is not going to produce the same quality of images as the one you'd find on a mid range phone with a mid range SOC. And a mid range phone with a mid range SOC that, you know, has the ISP inside is not going to be able to produce the same quality as what you'd find on a flagship. So it's very important to know this. If you are buying an entry level phone or a phone with an entry level processor, expecting to get quality pictures, I'm sorry, you're hurting yourself. That's just it. That's just the truth. Because I, I've never made any secret of this. I have, I, I use a mid-range phone, right? I use a standard mid-range phone. And then I take pictures and then I put them out there. And then I've seen people come up to me and be like, my phone is not taking pictures like this. And the first I usually ask them, okay, um, what's, what processor does your phone use? Uh, Helio G37, most of them do not actually know how to, sometimes I have to check for them. Some people know, not everybody knows. You start hearing stuff like Helio G37, Exynos 850, uh, 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 Helio G85, and so on and so forth. And I'm like, you really think that your phone can have the you know processing power, the power to process images the way a Snapdragon 720G can? And they're like, bro we don't understand what you just said speak english so that's why i'm making this video right now it's very very important it's very very important that i state this now another thing that we should know is that different companies or rather different uh, 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 smartphone soc companies go about the implementation of socs and isps as a result differently it's very important to get that clear now we're go i'm going to pick um, three examples now that's three of the biggest that's snapdragon uh mediatek and exynos Right, so these are the three biggest. Kirin is no longer what it used to be, so we're not going to be discussing that. There's really no point. So, when it comes to the ISP, Qualcomm, the makers of Snapdragon SOCs, they actually go all the way for photography, and I think this is one of the reasons why their SOCs are rather costly across board. But they do not really, um, what's the word to use now? They do not um, cut corners when it comes to their ISPs. But again, you also have to know that entry-level mid-range flagship but they make sure that they equip you know all of their socs with decent isps for their class and the isps that um qualcomm makes are called spectra isp so if you're checking a an soc spec sheet and you see anything that relates to spectra that's the isp on board now the beautiful thing about qualcomm why they have the edge for the most part especially in the entry level and in the mid-range segment is because they equip unlike other companies they equip their isps with an additional ai block you know to step in and help with the processing of the images that's why you see for example i have used my smartphone when, when i had the redmi note 7 and even now that i'm using the redmi note 9 pro with the snapdragon 660 on the note 7 and then snapdragon 720g here i have taken pictures on my smartphone and i've sent them to sites like uh, shutterstock for example that will tell you that they only want pictures from you know quote-unquote traditional digital dslr cameras and stuff but i submitted i submitted pictures there and then their ai was fooled because it thought the picture that was there was coming from a digital or a dslr camera not a smartphone so because of the quality of the processing that goes into you know the pictures when you use a phone with a snapdragon soc you are guaranteed to have great photos great shots so long as if you have decent decent photography skill then uh, let's talk about the next one let's talk about mediatek mediatek well, recently for the Dimensity 9000 and 9200, 9200 plus, they've gone all out for the photography aspect. And I think I'm, I'm very impressed with what they're doing right now with the ISPs they've got there. But when it comes to the mid-range and when it comes to the entry level, MediaTek pays lip service to photography. So if you're using a phone with a MediaTek uh, mid-range or entry level MediaTek SOC, the photography is not going to be it. I mean, it, it does try but it's not going to be able to compete on the same level as Qualcomm Snapdragon SOCs of the same class. For example, you bring the, let's say Snapdragon 680 against the Helio G85 with the same, uh, uh, with the same um, uh, image sensor, with the same camera sensor, 48, 48 megapixel. More often than not, you're going to see that the Snapdragon SOC is going to produce better pictures, better images than what you get on MediaTek, unfortunately. So if you, see, if you bring the Helio G95, for example, against Snapdragon 732G, more often than not, Snapdragon 732G is going to produce better images. Why? Because of the better ISP and AI block on board. 
if all things are equal. This is why, like most of the time, um, Snapdragon S is tend to pr produce better images because Qualcomm doesn't really shrek or they don't cut corners when it comes to you know image photography, image processing of photography on board. And then you got Exynos. Exynos is you know it's just the hit or miss. They don't they just bang average. You know nothing special. They won't give you bad pictures, but mm, compared to Qualcomm Snapdragon of the same class, yeah, they are just somewhere in between. So it's important to note that. Um, MediaTek ISPs are called MediaTek Imagic, I-M-A-G-I-Q, right? Then uh, the Exynos Dual or Triple ISP is also there. So these companies all have their different ISPs. Then also one thing I want to talk about too is um, software, software that runs on the hardware. The hardware is the ISP now. Different companies have different softwares that run on these ISPs. So it is important that you pick a company that will, you know, that pays attention to photography. It helps. It helps, it helps, it helps. I don't want to call names. I don't want to call names, but you know, look for a company. I mean, one of the very, very common one, one of the very common ones around uh, is Gcam from Google, which is the software is out of this world. If you pair a beautiful software like Gcam on top of a very capable ISP from Qualcomm, for example, more often than not, you get beautiful results. And you know, um, companies like Google, for example, with their Pixel Neural Core, you know, that's equips or combines the ISP and an AI unit into one single unit for processing of images. And then you've got Apple, the Apple ISP. I don't know what the name is. They've gate kept it and I've not really bothered to do any serious research into that area. But Apple's ISP is also like very good, especially when it comes to videos, videography. It's out of this world. And then, you know, I think um, th that's mostly it. So basically, when it comes to photography, let me round up very quickly. When it comes to photography, it's not just the camera sensor on the back, the ISP on board is also very very important you should take note of that so when you are buying a phone if you are if you are hell-bent on doing photography or videography with your smartphone more often than not i am going to ask you to lean towards qualcomm snapdragon socs or if you're going to go the mediatek route then go the dimensity route with something like 1200 that means 1200 and above if you're going to go the samsung route uh something like the exynos 1330 and so on and so forth. But anything less than that, if you are going to go with the G96, G95s, G90T, G88, G85, G37, unless you are a gifted photographer, your images are going to be not so good. So with that, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for coming. Um, please, if you like this video, or subscribe, uh, share, uh, hit that notification bell. And as always, if you want to discuss stuff, I'm always in the comments. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.